Birds of prey are amazing animals. The speed and power they emulate in flight combined with their natural weaponry make them truly remarkable predators. This was no different in the distant past, as in prehistory we know of many predatory birds that diversified across the globe, whether they were aerial or terrestrial in manner. One particularly infamous prehistoric family of predatory birds that we'll be discussing today were the terror birds, or as they're scientifically referred to as Furus rachids. These flightless giants were top predators in their ecosystems and roamed the Americas for millions of years before inexplicably disappearing. In this video we shall be discussing the anatomical features of these predatory giants as well as inferring potential behaviours inferred from the fossils. Among the most infamous predatory animals known from the time after the non-avian dinosaur's extinction, the aptly named terror birds were a family of carnivorous flightless birds that roamed what is now South America. They dominated much of the Americas for what is estimated to be around 50 to 60 million years, which is a very long time for a bird to be dominant predator of a mainland. They were a family that varied greatly in size and weight, with the smaller terror bird species being around the size of a turkey. On the other end of the scale, however, is Kalenken, which is believed to be the tallest of all the terror birds known so far. These giants could stand anywhere from 2 to 3 meters tall, making them one of the tallest flightless birds known to science, and could have weighed over 180 kilograms. The heaviest of all the terror birds, however, Brontornis, is also one of the most heavily built flightless birds known to exist, and could have rivaled a modern grizzly bear for weight, making it nearly twice as heavy as Kalenken even though it was shorter in height. Probably the terror bird's most interesting anatomical feature was its enormous skull and hooked beak. With a skull longer than a modern horse from front to back, Kalenken has the largest skull of any terror bird known, and also the largest skull of any bird discovered so far. As well as having a lot in common both physically and likely behaviourally with modern birds of prey, the terror bird's closest living relative is the Seriyima, pictured here, which itself is a fierce predator of small reptiles on the ground. South America during the age of the terror birds was home to a menagerie of bizarre animals. These included giant ground sloths, some of which could have rivaled an elephant in weight. It was also home to bizarre marsupial carnivores with long canines akin to a saber-toothed cat. There were also gigantic relatives of modern armadillos, some of which could get up to the size of a car. There was even a family of gigantic vulture-like birds known as teratorns, the largest of which, Argentaves, could have a wingspan more than twice the size of a modern Andean condor, a wingspan nearly 7 metres across. Yet amid all these bizarre animals, the terror birds were the true top predators of the landmass of South America. Then, when a land bridge was formed between North and South America around 2 million years ago, terror birds then began to roam freely between both North and South America. Many species were fast runners with long powerful legs that chased down their prey, whilst other more heavily built terror birds would have likely ambushed their prey in a similar manner to heavily built big cats. So this is the skull of a terror bird, or rather a life-sized anatomically correct replica of one. I'm not sure exactly what species this belongs to, it's probably a model of the skull of Furus rachus or maybe Titanis, which are two of some of the larger terror bird species that live towards the end of the era in which terror birds are known to have existed in North and South America. It's kind of hard to see exactly how large the skull is but it's around 40 centimeters long or just over a foot or around 16 inches um, in length from the tip of this huge beak to the back of the skull 
which is just by bird standards is gigantic although believe it or not this is not actually the largest um skull of terror birds known to have been found that belongs to Kalenkin, which is believed to be the tallest and probably among the largest of the terror birds which may have had a skull potentially an extra half or more the length of this basically the size of a horse which is just immense by bird standards So from looking at this skull, we can clearly see that this is a bird that was a carnivore. It hunted and ate other animals by the gigantic hook on the end of this beak and this sharp lower mandible here. It's very much like the hooked beak of modern birds of prey. In fact, it looks pretty much like a gigantic eagle skull. And this beak in particular is huge. And this area here is where the terror bird's eye would have been and much like modern birds today this bird would have likely had a very sharp sense of vision and would have likely tracked its prey mostly by vision although it's unsure exactly how sharp this bird's vision would have been although it's probably on a similar level to modern birds of prey who knows There's actually a feature that's found in many birds and reptiles alive today known as craniokinesis which is essentially a term for when an animal is feeding or using its skull and jaws for a certain behavior the bones of its jaws actually flex and move separately from the brain case or rather this part of the skull which is where all the vital organs like the eyes and brain are located and you'll often see, especially if you're watching, for example, wild birds feeding, which can be anything from a bird of prey swallowing food or even a parrot cracking open a nut, for example, you'll notice when they're actually feeding and using their beaks to open their food, you'll notice that their upper and lower jaw will move very in a very flexible manner. And often you'll see that it's much more flexible than many other mammals, for example, and you'll notice how it kind of flexes and moves in a way that is separate from the rest of the skull, which makes terror birds in that case very unique because in comparison, terror bird skulls, as you can see, are much more rigid and tightly fused. You'll see that the area of this part of the jaw and beak is not um, separate from the back of the skull. It's actually all fused in one. It's a very rigid, very hard structure. I mean, this is a replica, of course, but it's anatomically correct. So a real terror bird skull would look much like this. Very tightly fused and rigid and strongly connected. And that is in, in a way related to how this bird would have actually hunted in life. Because it turns out that this particular kind of bird would have hunted using its head as a primary weapon for dispatching its prey. Unlike modern birds of prey, which use primarily their feet to dispatch, although they do have the hooked beak for tearing their prey apart when feeding but terror birds had a very long muscular neck and you'll notice at the back of the skull here there's a lot of areas which would have been attachment points for huge amounts of muscle which would have connected to the back of the skull and the jaw as well as to the neck which would have made this bird's neck and head extremely well muscled in life and it would have been able to lift its head up and down incredibly quickly and with tremendous force and it's believed that using this very firm rigid skull and this massive hooked beak this bird would have likely run up to its prey and dispatched it by basically slamming its beak the hook of its beak and raising its head and actually striking its prey repeatedly using its beak almost like some kind of pickaxe As well as having this gigantic and deadly beak, terror birds also had very large powerful legs with sharp claws on the ends of their toes, which would have been a devastating weapon if a bird was challenged. 
Considering that modern birds like cassowaries and ostriches have a kick powerful enough to kill a grown human, it seems unsurprising that a terror bird in defence could use its powerful feet and claws for deadly effect. And yet despite their great ferocity and size, these formidable predators ultimately disappeared. It is unclear exactly why they died out, although it's strongly believed that climate change and habitat changing over millions of years ultimately led to their populations declining and eventually going extinct. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed this new and unique video about a prehistoric animal that I myself am deeply interested in. There will hopefully be more content in the future discussing skulls and various animals of different kinds, both living and extinct, as well as more falconry content. Until next time, see you in the next one.